Some of y'all went to church like that. We went to a church like that. Yep. And I come in Gerard. And you know what? If you only, it doesn't matter if there's one hole or two holes. If it's an outhouse, I'm going to be the only one in here. I can't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a private person. <laughs> That's just the way it is. <laughs> I didn't grow up with an outhouse. So going to one in a church, going outside in the winter, do you know what? That cuts down the running around, going out to the restroom in the wintertime. People be sure they, they don't drink a whole lot of coffee when they get to church either. <laughs> but, but, but if all we had was an outhouse out back and you had to go out the back door walk around, we could still come to church. We make it convenient today. We've got a his and hers restroom. Now I think the reason behind that, the women's night don't usually want those menus. <laughs> That's probably right. Because inevitably, as a I worked as a janitor before. Men's restrooms are always messier than women's. Always. Sometimes I wonder how in the world they get stuck when they get it. Mm. And I usually just don't know. It even happens in my office, I'm told. That, that, that there's stuff that ends up where they say, in the women's restroom. Well, how does it happen? I don't know. I don't know. But if all we have, well, let's look at what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 3 1. As he was wrapping up his, his uh, second letter to the church of Thessalonica, he says, Finally, brethren, pray for us. He was asking for prayer. Why? That the word of the Lord may have free course. Mm -hmm. And the Amplified says, That the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and run its course and be glorified even as it is with you. Paul was commending them too. He said, I'm thankful you guys are like that. Pray for us. He said, Not everybody's like that. Not everybody, you know, when you don't give the, the preacher an opportunity to, to just give to, to the Lord God an opportunity to move. And sometimes you cut off the service. I've been in churches like that. Man, I, I've been in a church service. I've been in services before. Little church in Beardstown one time. That man, that preacher, and it always annoys me when somebody makes a big scene and look at their watch. <laughs> what annoys me more is if there's a clock up here. I, I've been in churches where they have a clock behind them. Pre oh, that's horrible. Every church that we ever started, not that we passed, but every church we started, I didn't even allow a clock in the sanctuary. And, and, and here I am looking at that when I said that. <laughs> because that you know, yeah, looks bad. But and if I had my way, I would have had everybody check their watches at the door. Don't even bring a watch in. <laughs> Forget about the time when you're in church. Forget about the time. Let God have the time. Amen. You know, there's still going to be plenty of food wherever you're going. I promise you. There's plenty of food back there today, I'm sure of it. And we're going to have plenty to eat. And we're going to have a dunk, and I'm glad the dunk he got here. <laughs> <laughs>
several years ago when the Lord uh, laid this message on my heart. And, uh, so, and they start off with don't want to. Well, let, let me tell you this. It depends on where I'm at, whether it's don't want to. If I'm in a city church, it's don't want to. And fill in the blank. If I'm in a country church, it's don't want to. So we're a don't want a bunch of people here. <laughs> now I, got, I think there's nine of them here we're going to try to go through right quick. It's still point one, so we'll get through it, I promise. <laughs> don't when people say, they say, you know, I don't want it. And, and oftentimes I, I, hear pe- I hear preachers and I hear people from other churches, why can't we have uh, a move of God? Why can't God work in our lives, work in our church, work in our services? Well, they don't want it. A lot of these things. Number one, I don't want to go too far out of my way to serve God. I remember when we first offered our church to be last year for a Good Friday service. And they said, and the president and the ministerial association said, I don't think anybody would come out all the way to Atterbury. I said, but well, don't tell the people that come to Cowboy Church that. <laughs> they don't know they're not supposed to come all the way out of Atterbury. All the way six miles out, or five or whatever it is, five or six miles out to Atterbury. I don't want to go out of my way to serve God. Now, if there's a church right next door and they, they have a coffee hour, or there's some churches they actually serve coffee during the service in the sanctuary or in their multi purpose room. They have multi purpose rooms in a lot of churches. And they, they put chairs up, and this is a sanctuary one day, and it might be a gym the next night. You, know, you don't know. But they're, they're making use of the space that they have. But I don't want to go out of my way. If, if you make it easy for me, well, I'll serve God. If I don't have to do a whole bunch of things, like get, if I go to church, and there's a preacher going to get loud, come here, you probably will. Go someplace, you probably won't. Depending on what you want. Is the service going to be over by noon? Not here. <laughs> not likely, at least. Unless I'm not here. No. <laughs> and then, oh, our party. There's going to be drums in that church. There's going to be a guitar in that church. Some people don't think you all have anything but a piano and an organ in church. I don't know where they get that stuff. But I think we ought to praise God on anything that we can hit, bang, strip, a strum. And you know, we're serving God, we're praising Him. Yeah. And as long as you <laughs> please keep it in key. Because I guarantee you, and you'll see me do this sometime, especially at Calvary Church, when we're playing and people are clapping, I'm going to zero in. I don't know how I do this. My gyroscope zeroes in on somebody totally off beat. All of a sudden, I start playing off beat. Cindy, Cindy will be looking over at me with that look. The look. Gentlemen, men, men, you know what the look is, right? I get the look. Believe that or not, from time to time. And, 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 and I have to do If I play in bass, I'll get, I got the look this morning. I got lost. I get, I get my mind wandered sometimes. And I get thinking about the words, forget about the play, and I forget to change. Or I change when I'm not supposed to change. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm good. I haven't given up my day job. I'm not a professional bass player. I can say that again. I can, you all can say it's okay. Now, the attitude. I don't want to be inconvenienced in the least. I, 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 still, I just don't want to be inconvenienced. But to, you know, to, 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 oh my goodness, to get up and be at church by 11, that's so hard. In Auburn, we had church. Our services were at 2 o'clock on Sunday and 7 o'clock on Thursday. Something like that. But uh, we was always the odd duck everywhere we went. But but 2 o'clock, I still had people sleeping in. Oversleeping, late for church. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon. How does that happen? I don't get it. <laughs> but it happened. Yeah. It just wasn't. They were inconvenienced to have to get up, I guess. That's what it is. Don't want to miss any meals. Okay, now, preacher, you're, you're, you're getting too close on a potluck Sunday. There was a time in the Bible, let me see where the reference is, Matthew chapter 17, we're not going to turn there, verses 14 through 21, where the dad brought this boy who, what did it amount to? He was having seizures. And the disciples prayed for him, and nothing happened. Then they brought him to Jesus. And Jesus got a little disgusted at the disciples. And he just, just cast that demon out and Caesar stopped. The kid's fine. And, and they said, Lord, well, why couldn't we do it? He said, you know, one, because of your unbelief. You, you lack faith. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. And you don't, you're not there yet. They said, and this kind goes not out without prayer and fasting. You mean you got to pray? You mean walking with God, servant? I makes me want to pray. I gotta pray. Uh huh. I didn't come down to fast. I got nothing spiritual.
spiritual about fasting. It's the fact that you're sacrificing that food and saying, Lord, I want to stay in prayer. Forget about that food. Forget about eating. Forget about what's on TV. i got to get a hold of God. Amen. You know, when we have more people getting a hold of God, we'll have more miracles in our churches all across this country. Yes, we'll see the move of God. We'll see more people saved. We'll see churches grow spiritually. Then as they go out and, and win others, the churches will grow numerically. And that whole process starts on here. But that's what we want to do. Don't want to spend my time studying the Bible. I don't have time for that. If you don't have time to study God's Word, you don't have time to pray, you're too busy. But as in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul, Paul says, Study to show thyself what? Approved. Approved who? Under who? Under God. God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You don't study the word, you know what? There's a good chance you're going to get scriptures all mixed up. Or you come, come, come around with a skewed understanding. Or you're going to fall for somebody who comes around teaching another gospel using the word of God. Because if you don't know the word of God, it's easy to be deceived. Too many people just, just believe whatever the preacher says. And I don't want y'all to believe what I say. Uh, uh, I want you to believe what God says. You know, and if I get off track, put me back on track. You know, that's the job I believe of the congregation. And and, and, and that said, whoa, we gotta bring something in here. We gotta or, or clarify that, you know. But we need to be studying the word of God. I don't want to be molded like clay. That's not comfortable. I don't like that. Isaiah 64 8 says, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, and we are the clay, and thou art our potter, and we are the work of thy hand. What's a potter? What's a clay? What's a potter do? He molds, he makes, he adds, he takes out stuff that, that the vessel needs. Jeremiah 18, 6 says, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand. God talking to 